yes, people have a lot of different expressions, but also you won't find yourself, you don't want to find yourself in around no people. Real friends are not yes people. And it's easy to find ourselves if you're not careful and if you've got a big ego or you, you're insecure or you're overly addicted to being appreciated or admired, you're going to default into having a lot of yes people around you. I mean, I certainly went through that trap a long time ago. I didn't even realize that I, I didn't even like yes people, but yes people have a lot of different expressions, but also you won't find yourself you don't want to find yourself in around no people. So it's either no people are just always going to pull you down or you can't do that, that, you know, you have some idea, some inspiration. No, you can't. It could even be your parents, you know, a parent, siblings, people that just be no people around. They'll tear you down because they want to keep you at the level you're at or your yes people keep you at the same glass ceiling. You'll remove no people to those people, but then you, in reaction to that, you surround yourself with yes people that just accept you, accept you as you are, but you start to notice, well, wait, I'm in a circular trap. I'm in a horizontal trap because pretty soon you can't really grow because those people, maybe they're yes people, but they also have a some kind of an agenda, which is to conscious or typically unconscious, just to kind of keep things the same, right? The sameness, the sea of sameness. And so it takes something to wake up and really have people around you that have similar, they're going to similar places in their life, similar commitments, you know, a commitment to God, a commitment to being true and moral and, you know, having morals and ethics and integrity and having, uh, coming from love and generosity and, those kind of qualities, but that can also tell you the truth. And I think love is more at the foundation there. And it may be shared interest. It could be in different areas of your life. Work life could be, you know, in social circles or like that or family. But you want people who are going to be about the truth with you and from love and that have the different qualities of character that you admire that, that actually bring that out in you. In the same way that, you know, around those people, I didn't choose to eat the dessert because of the, just the environment there. If you're going to be around people or real friends, you don't want to do something wrong or lie or cheat or gossip or like that. But when I meet new people, I can appreciate them, but I also don't necessarily just trust them. I don't trust them and I don't distrust them. I'm just present with people. And if you want to know people, you don't have to figure them out. You just, just be with people. Just be present and, and trust, you know, your gut, trust your instinct and what you get there from someone. And maybe don't just be too quick to jump in and, uh, and just be all out, trust them or, or even distrust them. But uh, I think over time, trust gets created in a pretty organic kind of way. I think a lot of it with people that we surround ourselves with when we're not awake, when we're not aware of the impact is it's almost like we're this frog in our environment and maybe it starts right at home and then it starts in school, you know, kindergarten or first grade, second grade, and it's survival. And so you're in this pot of like water that's come to a slow boil and you're not aware of it and it's cooking you to death. It's killing you but you've never really stepped back and questioned it.